<laughs> All right, very nice to meet you. I am uh, Martin, also known as Bad Normals. I mean, in some, uh, with some people I can say Bad Normals, also known as Martin, which I think is more appropriate here, since you know Bad Normals more than my actual name right here. So we'll be making the um, Flappy Bird game with simulation nodes, which means um, exactly that. We'll be making uh, a full playable game with um, your uh, mouse, which looks something like that, so that you can jump around. And depending on your skills, sooner or later you will lose. Uh, so let's do it, for example, right here, like that. And that's the game. How is it useful? As per se, not at all. But if you want to uh, get into physics simulations or just the general minds of, of uh, simulation nodes in general, I think it is a really nice introduction. So, um, before we start, there is something I would like to talk about, and that something is myself. Um, a bit about me, just a tiny bit. Uh, which one of you, or who actually knows who I am, or has heard about bad normals in general? Oh, that's heartwarming. <laughs> um, so, where I keep my little story going, I'm gonna show some of the things I've done, uh, some of my work in the background. So, um, and in a better quality as well. So, uh, it actually all started in a bathroom. I had this idea of, you know, maybe we should make Blender tutorials, right? Because, why not? And I was at the time in a music academy, and I was, you know, not very happy with the thing in general. So I thought like, okay, let's make a Blender tutorial. I made a tutorial about Minecraft, even though I hadn't played this before, and it did like maybe 30 views. And then I made one of Among Us, and this got like maybe 20 views. And I remember I was in a cafe with a friend, and he told me like, oh, you have like seven subscribers. And I was like, yeah, I know, it's crazy, right? Seven subscribers. Uh, and the next video was about Geometry Nodes, which did a bit better. It received 10,000 views in like two weeks or so. And, you know, for a moment, I felt like a star. <laughs> and... Um, uh, this actually got me into the procedural things overall, because before that, I didn't have any experience with coding, any experience with nodes or anything. I just were a broke music student. And um, I started learning geometry nodes. Every day, I put in a lot of hours just you know, getting better and better and better. And I started making some intros for my videos, uh, which are the ones that this video is made of, and got um, you know, better and better with every video. And up until now, where I'm actually giving a talk about simulation nodes. Well, this, so the channel is one thing that I'm doing, and the other thing is um, another company. Actually, through those videos, I met another person, and we are doing uh, procedural materials. But this time, you know, without this whole node hassle, we are actually making a new way to make them with uh, a much easier setup. And we are also looking for a procedural artist, so there are some contact links in the description afterwards. Right. That's what I do. And with that said, I think it's safe to start. Although I finished this quite a lot earlier. Uh, I'm just gonna show you like this frame here a lot. <laughs> this one looks so cool. Uh, just looking at this final animation, then we can go. Yeah, you know, it zooms like in. I used Nuke for this for the first time. It was kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, that's, my, that's what I do. So let's start now. Uh, if, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. If you want to go along, which I see some of you have computers, which is very nice, uh, then you can go here to this link and you can download some assets. It actually has the end result and the initial file of, uh, of this bird thing. Uh, the initial file, end thing is the one here and the initial file I'm gonna show you right now. And we're gonna start, start from here. Okay, so if you want to create the Flappy Bird game, the first thing that we need is the bird, which we luckily uh, have here. So that you can see we have here two assets, and one of them is the bird, the other one is the pipe. Now, uh, the first thing, if you want to you know, make this game, you probably think, okay, what the bird, what does it have to do? It has to be in the air, and it has to like jump like that. Or actually, it jumps in a place, and the pipes move. So the first thing we should do is actually implement gravity so that the bird actually falls down in a more realistic way than just moving gradually. Let's add a new 
uh, geometry nodes window here. And let's add this random object like a cube that we can add some nodes on. And I'm going to call this node setup the game itself. And also, I'm going to call the object itself game because it's rather important to name your things correctly. For example, if you come back from lunch, you don't understand what you've been doing. So it's important to at least try to make something. Okay, um, we could just drag in the Flappy Bird and start working with that one, but you know, the bird asset itself has quite a lot of geometry, or like four points, but it's easier to actually uh, apply gravity on a single object, so like a just one point, for example. So let's delete this flappy word and let's add a new thing called a point. And if we output this and hide the assets because we don't actually need to see them, then you see we have one point in the corner right here. And I'm going to try to make it a comfortable view here. Now, if you press play, the point doesn't fall, and that's because we haven't told the point to do so. Um, so what gravity or free fall actually means is that we you know, just fall, move it down a little bit on the y-axis. But it has to happen on every frame. And if something has to happen on every frame, this means a simulation. And let's, let's remove this one. Let's connect those so that we inst make a little point. And then we start to repeat something on every frame and we output this as our geometry. That is how simulations work. Simon gave a really nice presentation about this yesterday. I hope you watched this. I watched, it was very nice. And well, let's add the set position node back. Let's put this here and let's say our gravity is, I don't know, minus 0 0.0, 0 0.02, for example. And if you play this, it starts to move down every frame. This is a horrible way to do gravity. It is very incorrect and it doesn't really look like gravity. It doesn't look like free fall. So I think you have heard about a certain number called minus, I don't have a graphics tab, but uh, nine, a, nine meters per second squared. What does this mean? This means that the gravitational acceleration is that and at the first time moment, the zero, the speed is zero, the next second, it will be 9.81, and the next after that, it will be like 20. So it keeps increasing in speed unless you have air resistance, which you probably know, actually in physics tasks, you never have air resistance, right? You just ignore this all the time. <laughs> and that's what we will do as well. Okay, so let's store an attribute, which is our gravity. It is a vector attribute since we're actually interested in a certain direction, which in our case is down minus 9.81, it's not 10, uh, like that. And now we can do so, Let, let's take this gravity here, select the attribute, and do we do like that? No, we don't do. Because the gravity actually gets turned into, uh, or in case the gravitational force gets turned into the velocity. The velocity is the thing that moves the object. Let's do it so that we take a stored named attribute, and we store a new attribute called v, which is the velocity. It is a vector attribute since our objects move in different directions, not just in one. And uh, the velocity attribute will be composed of the velocity itself from the last frame. And then we apply some new forces to it. So for example, if I have my phone here and I just like punch this, force gets applied, phone moves. Not too far, hopefully. And that's how it works. So let's take vector math node put it here and we add gravity to the velocity and then we use the velocity to move the object. Where is our point? We don't, we don't see this anymore because uh, the force is very extreme currently. I think the point is, yeah, here it is. It's way too, way too strong. Um, and why is it so? That's because of one great big reason and the reason is, you know, when I'm moving, I'm not moving, I don't know, seven meters per frame. I'm moving seven meters per second. But currently we are doing everything per frame. So every frame that we play down here, we reiterate the same setup and this is way too fast because we have currently, let's make 60 frames per second. So we should actually uh, do this only one sixtieth at a time. For that, we need the delta time. Uh, which is, uh, in our case, 1 divided by 60. 
I have used this one here, but I've also gotten some problems. So I'm just gonna store a new attribute called delta time, which is currently one uh, over 60, like that. Um, I'm gonna put this here. And now we can just scale the gravity that we add with, uh, with this timestamp. This should give us a very acceptable result. So you see already it is quite a bit slower, but the speed is itself as well, you know, per second, not per frame. So let's scale the speed as well. Let's duplicate the delta t, and we should have a really nice free-falling point, which can serve as our bird. So the first step is done. Let's group this thing. Let's call this um, uh, I don't know, gravity uh, to velocity, velocity. And let's group the other thing as well because otherwise we will have a huge mess going on. Let's group this one and let it be um, velocity, yeah, did mistake, to position. This is the basics of uh, actually, I think most of physics simulations where you have some forces, you apply them, you create like a velocity vector and you move objects with this velocity vector. This is how it works. Uh, this is ready. Now let's instance a bird on this uh, little point here. Let's take an instance on point, uh, like here, drag in the flappy bird asset and let's instance this on this thing here. And if you now go to the material preview, we see a bird that is falling down, just like in the game. Um, this camera here acts as our game window. So that what I will do is that I will move the bird in a more suitable location. So the point here should be maybe somewhere, I would say around here. Let's make it also larger so that it's nice and understandable, something like that. Okay, the bird is moving. How do we make it jump? This is, might sound a bit hard, uh, but it actually is pretty easy. So I'm gonna make it so that um, I'm gonna add here a store named attribute that is storing the same velocity attribute. So here we create this velocity attribute. Here we do something with it. And here we apply this to position. But what we will do is this one, you know, you see stores the velocity into zero. So if I play this now, nothing happens. Disable starts to fall like that. But what if I would, not that much. What if I would add instead here like a new acceleration? Now if I play this, I can enable this and the bird starts to jump because it receives some uh, extra velocity at a certain moment. However, there is a massive problem. The problem is the bird has a bit too much energy. So if I play this, you know, I can keep this in and it will continue to go on forever, which is not the case with the real game. So in the real game, you tap on the screen and it doesn't matter how much you hold your finger here, it will actually just, you know, get, get one impulse and fall back. It's not like you keep your finger there, it's gonna like go on like a rocket. It doesn't do like that. So let's create an impulse. It is a bit of a thing to do since, you know, you cannot actually get click information in Blender. You, you cannot get the click information. So let's build our own little game controller. For that, I'm going to uh, move the cursor to the world origin, add a little empty here, like a cube, make it smaller, and let's do it so. You see the center of the empty is this yellow little um, dot here. So if this yellow dot moves over the red line here, which means it gets positive on the uh, Y axis, then we register a click, but not like when I, you know, move it over and keep it there, it will not keep giving me the click. It will just give it once when I've moved over and then reset back to, you know, false or reset back to false. Okay. Um, this sounds like a pretty complicated problem to just start with like on the go. So the first thing what we need to understand is how do we understand if this empty is higher on this uh, or over the X line? For that, we need to get the position of the empty. So I'm going to pin this game here and I'm going to drag in the empty. Um, and honestly, the problem with this empty is we cannot store any data on this empty because it's an empty object. Yeah, and, but we can only store data on you know, points, edges, faces, 
face corners, splines, instances, and empty is not one of them. So what we will do is that we have one point for the bird, acts as our bird, and we have another one which is our controller, CTRL, CTRL, uh, like that. And we will just join them together and add them into our simulation, both, like that. And now we have the bird and the controller both going in. And if we uh, will see, where is, the, where is the controller? We don't see this because it's in the same location with the bird. So I'm going to reset this to zero. And now we have two birds. Not optimal. We need actually only one. Um, and in the end here, you see we instance on all the points currently, but we should be able to select only one. And for that, we need to add a little separation attribute. For example, uh, on the bird, we can get, create an attribute called bird, which is a Boolean attribute, you know, just true or false. I mean, you don't have any mixed feelings. It either is a bird or not. I mean, there is no question about that. So a tick box, this is a bird, this is a controller. All nice and clear. And now we can go in the end, add a little named attribute here where we have our bird, put this here, and now we only have one left. So the controller has now one point, and this point that we currently don't see because we only instanced um, on the bird, I'm going to add a join geometry so that we kind of have like both of them visible. Uh, the point here should move with the controller, so it acts as like a little memory stick of the controller. So the controller moves somewhere, the point moves with it, and records some data about this, and we can use this in our game. Um, so how do we move the controller uh, into the same location? If you press play, you see they both fall down, which means that currently everything we do is both for the bird and also for the controller, but they are clearly different objects. We don't want to do this. So I'm going to move the bird things up here. And down here, I'm going to add a little, like a separation. I'm gonna join them together like that. Now, this is no different, but I'm gonna add a separation, a separate geometry. So up here is my bird, and down here is my controller. And for clarity, I'm also gonna name this bird plus controller. Um, and of course, it doesn't do this right now. I have to separate based on the bird. So what the setup now does is that it finds all points that have the attribute bird uh, true, which in our case is only one point, and separates this up here. So the bird starts to fall down, but the uh, controller doesn't, since the controller is, you know, not, we do nothing with it. Uh, what we wanted to do is to move the point where the uh, controller is, because when I play this and I uh, select the empty here, you know, it doesn't move with my empty. Let's take a set position. Since we want to change the position of this point, take the empty, and let's use the location of the empty as the location of our point. Now the point moves with us. Um, for a controller, it would be more convenient to have this only move up and down on the y-axis, so we can add a little con uh, constraint, limit location, so we limit everything and do like maybe minus 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 on the x-axis. So now, however I move, it will only now move like a controller or like a little gamepad switch, and this is a pretty playable device, I would say. Um, okay, let's, let's group this thing and let's call this um, move CTRL to empty. This one is done. But how do you register the click uh, then? Uh, we have to first understand if the controller is above or below this X line here. For that, we need to understand the position. So if you take the position of all of those points currently, and we now separate this into the X, Y, and Z components. We are interested in knowing how f like high is it on the Y axis. And for that, we can use a compare node. Um, so I'm gonna take the compare node and compare if on the Y axis we are you know, higher than zero or not. 
If I now move this, it is higher, it is lower, it's higher, lower. But it's, you know, kind of doesn't, you know, turn itself off. It still keeps the click, as you see right now. Uh, let's uh, play the animation, let's see, let's see how it works. Yeah, I mean, it turns white. And we could use this as the, as the switch here, but it doesn't, you know, kind of work because you see it keeps itself being white all over and the bird is still gonna be like a rocket. So we don't want this and let's think about how we can solve this. Um, so to do this, I'm first going to store uh, this thing here that we made, uh, whether or not it's above the y-axis. I'm going to store this as an attribute called current because it is the current state of our switch. Uh, it's a Boolean attribute, like that. Not gonna group those yet because we have some more things to do. Move them here. And in the end, I'm gonna take the current attribute and preview this. And now I'm just gonna, you know, make my animation play and do like that. And go to a certain, you know, no, it, it was a bit too fast. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do like that, slowly. And now let's zoom in here and see. So when this is below the uh, red line here, it will always be black. I mean, it will always be false. But when I start to move up and up and up, now it gives me the impulse, and on the next frame I want this to turn off, but it doesn't. So we need to in introduce a logic for that to work. And my idea is so that we store the current position as we just do here, and we also store the previous frame position or the value here. So uh, currently on the previous frame it was black, now on the previous frame it was still black, and on the next frame it was white. So if two consecutive frames are true, this means turn, it, tur turn yourself off. We don't want you anymore. And let's, let's create this logic. Let's see how this works. Uh, so how do we get the previous state of this, um, of this switch? For that, let's use another store named attribute that we can actually copy from here. And before we write this current attribute, let's take the current attribute and store it, store itself, and let's call it instead previous. So how does this work? Might be a bit counterintuitive, but it works so that on the very first frame zero, we write an attribute into previous, but we don't have this attribute no more, so this will be like empty or something. Then we will write a new attribute called current, and on the next frame again, we will store this current attribute as previous, and we will be doing that so that we always have access to the last frame. And this is what gives us the ability to make the switch. So we have this and uh, previous and current. And now we need a third attribute where we combine them together using our logic. And this will, gives us, this will give us the impulse, this one little click when we move about this. I'm going to add a new attribute, which I'm gonna call um, impulse. And for that, we will use the current state um, and also the previous one. But how? That's the question, right? Um, to be honest, I figured this out a few months ago, but then when I you know, started practicing before the conference, I had forgotten that. So I was like, oh my God, how did I do that? And now I obviously remember. So uh, let's go over this logic once more. We have this, um, I'm gonna open up a spreadsheet. This gives us even more context, viewer node. And here we have two points. Mm, with all, those, all of our attributes, we have previous attribute, impulse attribute. Is, is this a bird? Is this a plane <laughs> or a controller? And um, we can understand based on that. And I'm going to play this again, do like that. So we have a little case here. And let's see, okay. So here, two consecutive frames are true. Um, okay, I'm going to add a, um, a Boolean math node, which helps me do some logic operations. Actually, the whole CPU of uh, computers is built with those expressions, and those are like really clever people who come up with such things. Um, and we will compare are the current and the previous frame both true. So you can see in the spreadsheet right here, so the previous is true, 
and the current is also true. If you go one frame back, do you see the previous is not true? Okay. And if they are both true, we should turn itself off. Uh, so, I mean, if they are both true, which they are right now, then let's just invert this and let's say turn yourself off, like that. So this is something that we need. And now I'm going to use a switch node because uh, our controller has two states. It is either above the X or below. Now, if this is below, uh, then we actually, you know, we don't care. I mean, it, it can just be the negative uh, value here. We don't do anything too special with it. So I'm gonna make this a Boolean switch. And if the current attribute is false, I'm just gonna use the current attribute. If the current attribute is true, which means it's over, I'm just gonna use our newly created logic system. I'm gonna put this here, like that. And now let's switch this attribute here for the impulse. Let's see if this works or I'm just talking nonsense. Um, it does work, so I'm not talking nonsense, obviously. <laughs> okay, uh, we have the switch here. And I'm going to order the impulse. I'm gonna group all of that here. It gets a little bit messy and call this thing impulse um, logic. This is the impulse logic. Um, and now we just should somehow get this impulse to our bird. Since uh, currently we are writing this on the controller and the bird doesn't know anything about this. It's like in its own bubble here. So really doesn't know what we do with the controller. If you preview this attribute, you know, if you play this, you see uh, the controller is flashing, but the bird isn't. So um, we should somehow get this attribute onto the bird and make this enable this node. Obviously we cannot enable actually a node. It is more of a UI thing. So let's instead use a switch. And the switch does so that when the jump is true, it uses like a new velocity that makes it go like that. And when the jump um, is not true, it will use the previous velocity. You know, just keep doing its own stuff. And we just need to get the impulse uh, somehow here. We're gonna do it like that because the geometry of the bird doesn't contain this attribute. And for that, we luckily have a node called sample index, which, um, which can sample based on the index of the point, get some attributes from it. So the index is like the address of a um, geometric element. For example, if you have only one element, the index is usually zero and second one is one and two and so on. Uh, now, since our controller geometry only has one element, it's pretty safe to say the index is zero. Uh, because there is only one element. It won't be probably 70 or something like that. And from that geometry, we will be getting uh, the impulse attribute, and we will be using this as the switch for our bird. So you see right now it works because every time we get an impulse, uh, it really works. Takes, takes, the, takes, it, takes it into account. Let's group this, Control G, and call this uh, maybe jump switch would be um, pretty appropriate, jump switch. Um, and, and this is, I mean, pretty much the logic of the bird itself. Now, the only thing that we need to make this game more like a flappy bird, uh, I'm also gonna play this or make visual. The only thing uh, that we need is to be sure that we actually have some pipes that we can collide with, okay. Uh, collisions, you know, dying birds sounds fun. Let's do this. Um, for that, we need the pipe asset. The pipe asset is, um, is right here in our scene. And we need to spawn this into our scene. So how do we do this? We basically do so that um, every frame we take the pipe asset and we add this to our geometry. Then we move this a little bit and then we add a new one and we move them all a little bit so that we just you know, keep flowing in some pipes into our scene. Uh, I'm gonna hide this. Um, let's do this. Uh, but the problem is, um, where do we add this? Um, we could be tempted to just add something here, but I mean, this is actually the controller lane here. We do some controller stuff here. We don't wanna mess with that one. We actually want to add a new separation here and separate the controller into its own safe you know, space here. And 
uh, the rest that is coming from here will be our pipes, and we will pipe the pipes in the end. No, does this work? Yeah, we will pipe the pipes in the end. So here I'm going to add a join geometry, and on every frame I'm going to take this pipe uh, object and gonna put this here. On the first frame you have this here. Uh, now if I play this, obviously we don't see anything because they will be all added to the same location. So instead I'm going to take a set position node and use a finely tuned value that I've been practicing seven times of minus 0 0.02 meters. This does it so that when I now play this, we start to have like a lot of pipes added into our scene and all of them move, which is uh, kind of good, but not very practical. So obviously we have a lot of them. We would actually much rather prefer to have, you know, let's say every 40 frames, you want to add one pipe and then another 40 frames also. Um, for that, first we need to understand how we can even turn this flow off. And for that we can use a switch. So for, exam for example, if I turn this into true, it will use nothing and and if you add nothing to your scene, it won't have any pipes. And we will, um, you know, you control the switch dynamically. So we'll use the scene time node and use a math operation called modulo, which means um, the remainder of a division. And in human language, it means so that if you have like frames and you do mod five, it will be like zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. And keep in mind that there was a zero there and we also have this thing piped into false. So every time there will be a zero, we will use this pipe. Let's put it to 40, and now every 40 frames, we will have one pipe flowing into our scene. We don't get anything on the first frame, which is annoying if you want to change the positions or anything and understand what we actually do. So I'm gonna subtract one here, and it seems to be working, yeah kind of shifts the incoming frames a little bit, so it makes more sense. So now we have the pipes flowing in, but not from the correct location. Let's go to the camera view and move them where we want them to move. Now it's very important where you're going to move them because if you move them right here, this will be done on every frame. But we will just change the position of the new ones. So I'm gonna move the new pipes added here. Uh, actually, I think would be better to um, Use a transform node for that, make it a little bit larger. If this looks uh, nice, we have lost the material though. Uh, so in the end, I'm gonna add a set material and get this wall material, we, we're back. Like that, and now we have some pipes flowing in, but you know in Flappy Bird we actually have, you know, we have ones on the bottom, the ones on the top, and they are, you know, can't do that with my fingers, but they are, <laughs> you know, random like that. So, um, Let's, make, let's uh, do so that these are like the ones below. And we also have ones on the top. So we're gonna join the geometry. Uh, these are below and these ones are top. Let's go to the first frame. Um, I'm gonna move those ones up. Rotate them 180 degrees. And yeah, this is a bit too difficult. I uh, know, kind of the same. Like that. So now we have pipes up and down flowing in. They are very, very uh, uniform though. I mean, they are just a straight line. Uh, so each frame, when we add something, we should move it in a you know, random up or down or whatever we want to do with them. For that, let's use a set position node. Let's add this here. Uh, currently we're only doing from the pipes up here and let's add a random value we, because we want to move them randomly. So I'm gonna take a vector random value put this into the offset, does like that. Not very good. So what do we do? The problem is in the ID here. So currently it has, uh, how this node works, it, it's gonna take an ID and based on that ID, it's gonna generate a random value. And since this one has like, I think four points, this asset, then, well, the ID is gonna be different, so every point is gonna have a different value. But we just plug in like a random number here, like zero, and now the random value will be the same for all the points. Let's do like 0 0.5 and maybe, actually this is, this is a bit too much. So I'm gonna make it vary on the Y axis by 0 0.25. But if you play, it won't still be different. And that's because the seed here is the same for all the frames. 
So let's take the scene time node and plug the a frame into the seed. And now you have some different pipes coming into your scene in a pretty, I would say, nice way. Let's copy that. Let's do the same thing for the um, 40, 40 uh, pipes down here. Offset, is it working? Mm, I would say, but the, no, it doesn't seem to work very well though. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Uh, does work, yeah, but the seed is also, I mean, the same for both of them. So they form like this uh, symmetrical thing, now they're different. Okay, the pipes are flowing into our scene, everything is nice, now we need uh, the collision system. So I'm going to group all of that and call this uh, spawn pipes. Spawn, spawn pipes, move it here, um, like that. Uh, how do we create the collision? What is even a collision, actually? I mean, this sounds like it's just kind of a trendy word that everybody talks about in computer graphics, but collision is actually uh, when you are, you know, you know, things touch, right? But we cannot do it kind of like that in computers because we have discrete frames. So we might have, you know, a wall, and then we have like an object, and this one frame is here, the other frame is here, and the next frame is maybe here. I mean, obviously we had a collision, but where? I mean, there are complex and more complex ways to calculate the exact point, but we'll just do so that when it is in a certain threshold, like here or here, it kind of already collided. So uh, for that, we have a node called proximity, geometry proximity, and we can find the proximity of the bird uh, to the pipes. So if we take the viewer node here, and we start to play. Uh, uh, why can't I choose this? Okay, so you see it turns, it's white currently, but it becomes like dark in some regions because it has collided with those, uh, uh, with those pipes. I'm going to use a compare node to make it a Boolean value, either a collision or not. So if the distance is like less than 0 0.05, um, I think it's the collision. Can be any value, but you, you, you can tune this yourself. Um, so this is the collision, and I'm, well, uh, let's do so that something happens when the bird collides. What usually happens when a bird collides with something uh, like that, right? <laughs> so let's uh, do so that we use, instead of this jump switch, we kind of create another switch, which is a store named attribute. Uh, vector, we store the velocity again, and when the collision happens, uh, vector, if it doesn't happen, we're going to use the same velocity as always. So velocity right here. If it does happen, when this is true, we're going to use something, you know, like minus 10. So it kind of like goes down like that. And let's put this here. And let's put this here. Sounds like a nice idea, right? So let's play and let's see what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, it's easier to de develop a game than to play this. Um, so it moves down, but you see it actually can come up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that? That's not very. That's not very good, you know. So we need to some way for the bird to actually remember it has crashed. I mean, it's not the case with every bird that they remember that they have crashed, but this one actually should. So somehow we have to keep this in memory, and for that we're going to use a solution like that. We're going to create an attribute called a boolean attribute called lost. So the bird has lost the game. And into this attribute, we're going to store that one. And we are going to use this attribute called lost um, as the switch. Now, this is the exact same thing as we did before, no differences. But um, what we are going to do is that we are going to also take the lost attribute from the last frame, mm, like that. And, you know, let's say, we haven't lost yet. So can you even actually hear me if I'm talking here? Yeah, yeah you can still hear, okay, right. So um, let's say we haven't lost yet. So this means the value is false, false, false. And they keep adding it to itself. But since this is you know, zero, it actually won't change anything. But once we lose and we add this one, kind of, you know, we pour something into this, this cup, 
you know, there is water inside. We cannot get this out anymore. So if we have lost even only once, this will be in this attribute. And this means we will keep this in mind forever that we have lost. Um, OK, this is the last attribute. Doing like that, going to call this lost. And let's see if this works now a bit better. OK, we move, we move, we move. And it turns down, and we cannot move up anymore because the bird knows it has to go down. It remembers the loss. Let's call this one um, lost velocity, lost v, whatever. And this is exactly how this works. Um, now, one thing to tune about this is the jump switch here because currently it's a bit mm, it's a bit too aggressive I feel so I'm gonna put this to three and now I can play this in a more in a bit of a better way and I mean kind of it is like flappy bird you know but you feel something is missing here so when we lose I mean the pipes still keep flowing and the bird is like doing like that it's not actually you know kind of smoothly flowing so let's deal with the pipes um, first uh, so the pipes should stop when the bird also falls down. And since the lost attribute is on our bird and our con pipes don't have this, we have to use a sample index. So from that bird, you're going to sample the lost attribute, named attribute called uh, lost, which is a Boolean attribute. We're going to sample this. Our bird only contains one point, so from index zero. And we will use that as a switch. So currently, every um, pipe moves at this speed. But if um, the loss happens, they will stop. And if it doesn't happen, it will use uh, the same um, speed. So let's see. Now, if I play, do I get some? Yeah, exactly like that. They stop. Also, this is all nice and good, but the bird is still very stiff. I'm going to group this one, and since uh, I have only, I believe, five minutes, I'm not going to name this. I'll <coughs> let you think what the name could be. Um, so the instancing happens here, uh, and we should somehow make the bird, you know, when it goes down, the bird should kind of like uh, rotate a bit, uh, little bit more like that, and when it goes up, it should be more like that. Uh, luckily, we have this information already, and this is our velocity attribute. Since the velocity of the bird is, you know, exactly pointing where the bird is lo looking at. And we can uh, solve this pretty easily by aligning the bird, uh, the vectors of the bird, to something else. So the bird asset itself uh, looks like that. And we, um, we want to align the x-axis of the bird so that it looks up or down. I'm going to go back here. And... We will align the x to the velocity and put this as the rotation. Hide the assets. How does the bird look? Mm, all right. Um, let's see. Let's see what happens. Oh. So you see it is like a super fast reaction speed bird. It goes up, it goes down, and oh my god, what is the problem? Oh, the controller was in a weird location. Okay, so you see up, down, up, down. This is a bit too extreme. Luckily, there is an easy way to solve this. So you see currently the velocity vector is either up or down. And this is why it does exactly like that. But what if the, it had also an x component, so it was more like that? So we can do this. We can take a vector math, and we can just add something, like maybe two. And now the bird uh, should move you know, in a relatively, I would say, better way. Very nice, very smooth. And we can maybe tune down the factor also a little bit as well. So uh, this is how it works. Let me, know, let me think about if there is something else the bird should suffer from. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, OK, just a uh, little background. And we don't have enough time to make this background you know, react to the loss. But how I did this is that I basically, you know, transferred the same attribute to the background, and you can use this to mix uh, between different colors. So if the loss happens, you can turn this red or whatever color. Also, with the same technique, you can add like some text, like you, I don't know, you 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 don't know how to play or anything like that. 
and that's uh, that's how this works. So I hope this gave you an an introduction to how you can do something like that with simulation nodes. It was interesting to watch, hopefully, and that's all from me. Hey, thank you. <laughs> also, we have two minutes actually, so if you have any questions about which jam I like or something like that, you can ask me. <laughs> what? Explain? Ah, oh, you want to see me play? All right, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> that's what we were gonna do, you know. Actually, I should, do we have some streams with Switch, Twitch or something? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, well, it's not the full screen actually. Okay, well, you know, actually I'm gonna make this more cinematic, you know, I'm gonna add some passepartout. And uh, we can now get to this. Uh... All right, I hope I didn't make this too hard for myself. Uh, all right, I was trying to add a score as well. Um, well, this is way too easy actually. Maybe I'm just a pro, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs>